change the font. In the text tool, drag select some text and then select from the font drop down list here. This is split into three sections. The top shows the fonts used in the current document. Next is what's called the web safe fonts. Only these fonts are safe to use for the main text on your website because only these fonts are common across all computers. This last section shows all the other fonts on your computer. If you select any of these fonts for your main text, you'll get a warning when you come to save your HTML. But of course, you can use any of them in your graphics. Note how the text updates as you traverse the font menu, so you get instant feedback on how it will appear in your document. So let's apply a silly font to this text. If I preview this page, it warns that not everyone has this font, and so they won't see it correctly. However, if I select Arrange, Group, remember you can group just a single object, then this is now converted to a graphic, which will ensure everyone sees the exact font. You can still edit this in Web Designer though, it's just converted to a graphic when the HTML is created. You won't see rotated text on many websites, because HTML doesn't support this, but in Web Designer you can rotate any text, even columns of text like this. Note the high quality on-screen rendering of rotated text. If you preview this, you get exactly what you'd expect. Web Designer knows that it has to convert rotated text into a graphic. It's really just a graphic image. Let's undo that. The info bar controls let you adjust the text alignment. This one controls the line spacing. I can adjust it using these small bump controls, as you can see. Or I can enter line spacing value, either as a percentage, for example 120%, or as an absolute value, such as 15 pixels. These control the paragraph spacing. The last ABC icon controls the spell checking. Just select check as you type and all misspelt words will be shown with the red dotted underline. Right click on any such word and it will suggest alternatives, as well as the option to add the word to the dictionary. In the spell check menu you have a list of languages. It's important to realise that this can be set on a per text object basis. For example, if I select just a region of text and select US spelling, then this will use American dictionaries for this part of the text. When you click on the page and start typing, it defaults to 13 pixels Arial font, which is about 10 point. To change the default font, first ensure that nothing is selected. You can press Escape as a shortcut, or click on the background in the selector tool. Note the status line. Then in the text tool, just select the font or size you want as the default. I'll choose 11 pixel font size. It will ask you whether you want to set this value as the current default text attribute. Just select Set. I'll set a different font as well, from the WebSafe font selection, to Homer. So now if I click and start a new text object, it will appear as 11 pixel to Homer font. Let's preview that to see what it looks like. You can paste text in from other applications. So for example, I can copy this text from Word. Go back to Web Designer and paste. You'll be asked whether to paste as rich text or unformatted. Choosing rich text will retain all the text styles. One last point. You may want to add a new text object to an area already covered by a large text column, for example here. If you click in the text tool, it doesn't create a new text object, it just places the cursor in the text below wherever you clicked, as you would expect. So to create a new text object on top of another one, just push the page to the side and create an object in the pasteboard area. Now you can drag it back on top of the other text.